Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, A Little Geek, A Little Chic. Today we are going to talk about the books that I read in the month of April. So grab yourself, your beverage of choice, and let's talk books. It was crazy. So, so as you are all well aware, if you watch my life update video, if not, I will link it at the end of this one. We made an offer on a house, got it accepted, sold our house, had the conditions moved, that was in one week, and we are effectively moving into the said new house and giving up possession of this house within the one month span. It is chaotic. So. Needless to say, I didn't read as much as I wanted to this month and I was very audio ebook heavy because I could only read slash listen to what I could read slash listen to and also my work decided that we would do a work from home situation during this so we are packing up, getting ready to move and now I'm hauling back home to work from here. So that is a fun fun time. <laughs> it's kind of chaotic but it's going to be okay. It's going to be over soon. And then in May, I'm hoping to read a lot more than I did in April, but let's get into what I did manage to read in April. To start off April, I listened to an audiobook called, do you mind if I cancel and things that still annoy me by Gary Gennetti, I think is how you pronounce his last name. This is hilarious. I thought it was funny. It's just like a commentary on his life and how he went to film school and how he became a writer. I think he's a screenwriter slash actor and he's hysterical. I fully enjoyed listening to all his escapades and the events surrounding his love life and how he um, dealt with situations that came up and being socially anxiety, uh, socially anxious person and um, getting past things like that and listening to the voice in his head maybe too much and how he got over things like that all with a super comedic flair. Um, there's one about when he goes to school, he is in school with David Schwimmer and they graduate, they leave, they're done this acting screenplay writing school and they go out on to the into the world to become their people. Well, David Schwimmer makes it big. If you guys know, he's Ross from Friends. And uh, Gary meets up with him again at one point when he's on set of Friends um, with some of the producers and stuff, getting a kind of a tour of the set because they're gonna he's doing some writing in the area or something like that. And he comes face to face again with David Schwimmer, and he's excited because he's like, "Hey." He's, and the David Schwimmer's like, hi, I'm David Schwimmer. He's like, I know who you are. Like, we went to school together. And he, it's just like a whole chapter of his entertainment, like, and super entertaining about how he met David Schwimmer again. And David Schwimmer has no idea who he is, does not remember him at all. And it's super frustrating to him. It's like, yeah, okay. You went out and got huge, and here I am in front of you, and we went to school together. And he's like, yeah, sorry, I don't remember you. I'm David Schwimmer. And he <laughs> reaches out for another handshake. And, like, it's just fantastic. Um, so it's super lighthearted, easy to get through hilarious and super great to listen to. I really appreciated his commentary and that he does the, I like it when they do when it's a memoir situation, when you actually hear it from them. That's, those are some of my favorite memoirs and I really appreciate those. So this one was really good. Gave this one four out of five. Um, I don't usually like to rate people's personal lives, but based on delivery and everything of an audiobook, it was a really good audiobook. So don't like to rate people's personal lives and the book content, so I'm not going to rate it on that. I'm just going to rate it on how much I thoroughly enjoyed the audiobook, and I did. Um, now, the second one I listened to was kind of like a self-help kind of a book. So I can rate these ones. Give this one like about a three. It didn't do a ton for me, but it was the message was really good, and that was worry. La, what is it? Choose wonder over worry. I have it written down here. Um, and it says, Move Beyond Fear and Self-Doubt, and that was by Amber Ray. And again, the premise of the book was great. The execution just kind of fell a little bit flat for me, but some of the messages I did take to heart and it did kind of help me at a point where I was quite anxious and quite worried. 
and I picked up this audiobook thinking that maybe there'd be something in there that would just like spark. And there were some little tidbits and like there were some little Easter eggs in there that did like hit the mark and it did resonate with me as something that I could internalize and it helped me in the moment. So it did do what it set out to do as a book, but I don't think it did it long term. Um, so I don't think this is going to be a book I repick up and think about over time as like, oh yeah, this is a, a staple. You know, it's not like The Secret. Everybody knows that book. That book's like the secret relationship book of all time. And it's, it's not that at that caliber, but it was a good book. Glad I read it. Helped me a little bit during the time I was feeling more anxious and worried about stuff. So it did serve a purpose. Um, the next book I uh, listened to was this one I read. I don't know what to rank this one, you guys. I'm going between a three and a four. Probably give it like a 3.5. Um, I wanted more from it. And that is Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. Third book in the series. The first two books were full of action, full of force, dark, twisted, seedy, fairyland realm, just chaotic and loved every second of it. And you can tell that there is like an enemies kind of lovers vibes in there between the two main characters. I'm not gonna say too much about it, but you kind of get that vibe in the first book and then it kind of carries on. Um, so in this book, we follow the two main characters, uh, Jude and Carden. There are a lot of other characters that have um, a lot of face time in the book. So there are a lot of other primary characters, I would call them, but not the main characters. The main characters really focuses around these two individuals. Um, Cardin, who is the prince, and then the next he becomes the um, king, and that's a whole different thing about the, from the first book. So if you haven't read it, please pick it up. The first book's amazing. Second book's amazing. You could read just the second book, see what happens, and skip the third. Uh, I don't know how I feel about it. Let me give, just give me a second. I, you could um, skip the third book, but I personally listened to the audiobook of it um, just to finish it off because I didn't like where it left. And there is a lot of backlash in the community about Holly Black's third book and whether or not she did it justice. And some people are upset and I can see why, and some people loved it. So if you're on the team, loved it, great, perfect, grand. But I personally, I liked it, but I didn't love it. It was definitely the, the, not worst, but out of the three, I disliked it the most. Um, the other two got five stars from me, and this one falls at a 3.5. I just thought it maybe wrapped up too nicely, and there was a bunch of stuff in the book that was maybe uh, not, it was, I think it was too small. I think she maybe should have gone to a fourth book. I think it didn't give us the full premise of how the world was going to develop past this point. Um, I think that the hate to love, enemies to lovers romance thing was a little bit too perfect. I didn't feel that there was enough fighting and darkness to this book that there was in the other two um, and I also there were some things that happened in this book that I think maybe could have been developed more and I think that they were just like this happened and it just happened because it did here we go and I'm like oh she just comes in touch him he's she's not magic but all of a sudden he's spoiler but all of a sudden he's fine I'm not gonna tell you who it's in relation to but still I'm like I could have used more explanation in some parts to explain to me how some of the stuff actually worked the way it did. And for that reason, I'm only giving it a three and a half out of five. I feel like it just kind of fell flat and I just needed a little bit more from it. And I wanted a little darker, um, not so much rainbows and sunshine. And I just wanted it a little bit darker than it was. And unfortunately it was not. So I'm on team in the middle on this book. I'm never, not on team seriously dislike this book or seriously love this book but if you like again if you loved it perfect let me know in the comments below what you really liked about it maybe you can sway me to be more on team love than team dislike 
Uh, right now I'm kind of just floating in the middle like Switzerland. So if you have any comments about um, Queen of Nothing by Holly Black, please let me know down below what you thought about it. If you read it, are you on team love it or team hate it? I'm really interested to find out your take. Um, if you're not reading it because you don't want to ruin the other two books because you've heard a lot of negative feedback about this book, let me know that down there below too. Um, and lastly, last book of the month is a physical copy. Here we go. Are you ready for this? I'm so excited. I read Get a Life, Chloe Brown. Five out of five stars, you guys. This is the best book I read this month. Hands down, love the characters. Red is the main character and Chloe is the other main character. Now Danny and Evie, I think, are the other two characters that you see a lot of in this book. And those are the sisters of Chloe Brown and now subsequently have their own um, novels, companion novels to this one. So you don't have to read them in order. There's some Easter eggs probably in them, but you can read them in whatever order you want. And just follows each of their experiences and like struggles in life and, and finding love. And so the way that this one is, is that Chloe Brown has, um, I believe it's where you have chronic pain all the time um fibromyalgia and so she is finally had enough of people babying her and she's moving out on her own to experience life and she's got this apartment she's on her own and she's got a list she made a list when she was involved in a it's not a spoiler it's at the very beginning of the book very front um she was close to getting involved in a car accident that happened right in front of her so she considers that her near-death experience and it's time for her to span herself and make her list and tackle the things on this list and she calls it her get a life list and Q Red who is a superintendent maintenance person at her apartment and he helps her complete her list and it is the most fantastic sweetest best book I read this month and one of my favorite rom-coms I've read to date like I it, there is definitely some steamy stuff in here uh, full disclosure on that, like some steamy stuff, but it's what you get with the rom adult romance, right? Um, the characters are realistic. They have faults. They have flaws. They are funny. They are great. Uh, the sisters are fantastic, especially the youngest one. Oh my gosh, do I ever adore her? And her grandmother is also a character in this book that I really, really like a lot. And they're a family for money, and so she doesn't have to live in this apartment, but she chooses to. And Red can kind of see through her. He knows she's not the usual tenant of an apartment like that. And um, he's attracted to her anyway, even though she maybe gets herself in some predicaments that paint her in a poor light. But that's for you to read and find out. She, this book is just great. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. But yeah, be forewarned about the steamy parts. And if you're ready for that, you will love it. So that is it for what I read in the month of April. Like I said, hopefully May will be better. I am going to do a TBR for May. It's going to be lofty. I'm going to have lofty goals that I hope are attainable during the moving because I will be moved May 5th and 6th, but then there will be a lot of unpacking and all that kind of jazz. So. Thank you so much for watching. As always, leave some comments down below. Tell me what you read in the month of April and if there's any books that you think I should pick up that you read that you think I would really enjoy. I would appreciate to know about them. I love recommendations and I always take them to heart. So um, yeah, thank you so much as always for all of your likes, all of your comments and all of your subscribes. And I will see you soon with another video.